Hey guys, this is John here with Redenso. And I'm Mindy. Hi. And today we're going to talk about uh, the difference between open source and an open API, a little bit about what those things mean, uh, what they mean for Thea, and just in general. Yeah. So open source and open API, I think are, for me personally, at least I guess I'll speak to and a lot of people I've spoken with, people aren't really familiar with the differences between totally. source open source versus open API. And it's like... They, they just hear open and they think they're the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't blame them, frankly. I mean, it's nobody's out there explaining it. Yeah, and I, I think about like my normal everyday life. Um, there's really nothing that's either. So, I mean, again, in my daily life, I'm sure. Or different. at least nothing that is, I know is obvious yeah. that you are. I mean, behind the scenes, there's probably a decent amount of it. But, you know, when you're walking, when you're in checkout line at the store, yeah. and you don't realize that you're your card readers running on a embedded Linux open source. You just swipe your card and move on with your day. Yeah. So it's one of those things that there's a lot of open source stuff out there. It's just, we don't see it obviously as the average consumer. So what are, um, let's overview. What is open source? Let's start there. So open source and just as a very general concept, what it means to the consumer mm -hmm. is that um, we're going to publish the code that our engineers write that control the operating system of our radar detector. And beyond publishing it, we are also going to allow other people to contribute to it, to change it, um, to make it better, make it worse if you want. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, and then we, we distribute that code to the community. And it's a little bit, it's, it's not widely, widely done usually in this type of product because this industry has been so um, kind of secretive. Yeah. Everybody's, everybody's been worried about revealing how they detect things or how they do things and hiding that behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. But I think that we're at a point where um, we've probably protected ourselves enough patent wise and more importantly, our hardware is the only hardware that can run this right now. So talk about the last yeah, no, yeah, nobody else can even take our code and put it on the detectors because their detectors are too slow to run it. So I'm not really afraid of showing everybody what we're doing. I'm proud of the engineering that we've done. And um, one of, Rob, uh, one of our DSP engineers, he has a saying that there's nobody in the world smarter than the entire internet. So true. There's so I mean, much talent out there that's, you know, has the capability of adding so many cool things to the things that we would never even think of. I yeah. mean, I don't know how everybody uses their detector. Yeah, and I know it's, it might be trivial. It's trivial to a lot of people here at Rodenzo. It's a big deal to me. Alert tones, right? And, you know, we've made numerous jokes throughout, you know, the last couple of years about it would be really great if our detector could do X, Y, or Z as far as, you know, an alert. If it's open source and we're giving them the code. If somebody who understands embedded Linux development, and I know that there's a bunch of people on RD Form that do, um, you'll be able to take the code base that our engineers uh, made for us go through it line by line, find what you don't like, and change it. That's you can awesome. literally make it what you want. Now, here's an important distinction. There's already a lot of great apps out there for radar detectors, but an app can't change how the black box inside of the radar detector actually works. Traditionally, um, open API, like the Valentine, a really simplistic explanation of what that is, is almost like there's a published language that lets um, your app talk to the radar detector. So what Valentine did was they say, hey, here's how you can ask the radar detector questions and here's how the radar detector can respond. So you can make an app and say, hey, I want to know when you get K-band. And then it lets you know and you put it on the screen. But what you can't do is rewrite, even see how internally uh, the Valentine one's operating on the processor and change it to your liking. That's the level of freedom that open source allows you to do so what made you pick, or not pick, but choose the option of allowing this to be like an open platform, so to speak? I honestly, I think I just wanted to kind of blow a hole in everything in terms of the, the stagnation um, in the industry. I mean, when everybody's trying to hide things from everybody else, there can be a lack of... Uh, motivation to improve things and with what we've built on the hardware side um it's an entire computer i mean i can't even think of the possibilities that talented developers are going to do um when we were in development of this i use uh with our engineers they introduced me to a lot of open source software 
um, tools that are worth literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they were free for me. Phosphor. Um, that was an example. Yep, you guys have seen uh, kind of like the, the RF displays that we've shown in some of the Vortex videos where you can look at what the BSMs look like. That software is totally free. Um, somebody spent time to develop that and then shared it with the community, and what's really cool is the community starts contributing, and the software gets better and better. Um, so I, I felt like if we were going to do a Linux-based radar detector, if I used open source tools during development that I really derived value from, um, why, yeah, why not, why not open it up and, and let everybody run with it? So moving forward, our products are going to be open API mm -hmm. and open source. Yes. I mean, I, I don't see any reason not to do that. And again, frankly, I'm super excited to see what what distros or distributions is a term for the, the Linux that's going to be on these detectors. I can't wait to see what people cook up. Um, I'm sure they're going to be drastically different than what, what we thought of, and I'm sure there's some of them that are going to be better for certain users. And I, I think this kind of solves the problem where there's no one radar detector that's best for everybody. Well, tweak it. Yeah, now there can be. Right. Um, find a developer who, who's going to write for Thea that kind of fits your ethos and and develops in a way that makes sense for you, and you can have the perfect radar detector. So, which is, I think, what everybody has been looking for their entire life, right? Is that how many radar detectors have we all bought to find that perfect radar detector, and yeah. how much money have we spent? <laughs> um, one thing I had a question on is, so if it's open source, um, what does that do for warranty? Because my first thought is, mm. you know, I've done something... Oops. Yeah. What do I, you know, what are, what are my next steps of action? If, you know, that. so I, we are not going to avoid the warranty if people want to run um, a different operating system on Thea. Um, now what we will need to do if you're calling in for support and you're not running our official Redenso distribution, um, we may not be able to solve your problem unless you switch back to it. And the reason for that is because I don't know what the developer did when he Other wrote your operating code, system. Yeah. Exactly. It'd be yeah. like it'd be like Apple trying to do tech support for Windows, right? I mean it's it's two different developers. Um, but I'm certainly not going to avoid the warranty if people want to try different things. Um, that kind of the whole point of this. It's my goal to have a robust development community spring up around this device. And what's interesting too, like, is the amount of people who are have become interested in Redenzo, Thea Ray, since we initially first launched this uh, at SEMA, yeah, like that are not even like enthusiasts. Um, not of ca the not countermeasure yeah. enthusiasts. We've seen scientists reach out. We've seen um, other engineers from other industries. Yeah, we, we've got some machine learning people that reached out. This, it's kind of an interesting platform, um, even outside of, of radar mm -hmm. detection, because it's modular and it has all this this capability on it. Yeah. And uh, when you say modular. What do you mean by modular? So the, while everything is in one case that you're going to hang on your windshield, let's just say that somebody wanted to buy one and take it apart, right? You will be able to unplug the antenna from the, uh, the, where the, the motherboard, where the AI lives, I guess. And you will be able to plug a different antenna in if you know, if you're an electrical engineer, RF engineer, if you know how to design this stuff. Um, because it's all open source, you'll be able to interface with this. So we're not going to be right away selling, you know, 10 different antennas or anything. This is kind of more for a technical crowd. Um, people that have played with software defined radios, I think we'll really know what we're talking about. It's that type of a platform. And I don't see a reason to restrict it artificially, I love it. especially because none of our competitors can run the software on their radar detectors. Yeah. So we we're talking a little bit about this morning, like how far behind the radar detector industry is versus all the other categories in consumer electronics really it's staggering yeah and this and this really takes it out of our hands right yeah. i mean we'll i i think the ideal open source model for a commercial company like us is we do what's difficult for you guys at home to do which is spending millions of dollars with hardware development yeah. right like that's that's hard you can't an average person at home doesn't have the ability to go design their own radar detector from scratch and have the money to get it produced. So we did that. But one person who knows how to develop Linux yeah. can code an entire operating system at home. It takes one guy. So you and guys can do that. There's a lot of them out there. We'll do the hard part and we'll give it to you. We'll sell it to you. Yeah. I love it. 
All right. So, uh, kind of a just a taste of things to come with uh, as you know, 2020 progresses. Hopefully, you guys found that informative. As for, informative as we talked about API, open API versus uh, open source. Yep. Take care, everyone. Bye.